met Evan through Yeti, actually. Um, he took the role as the Marine ambassador and formed a friendship from there. It's so often the case, you know, you have sponsors that you work with and you form these relationships and, you know, it becomes more than just a business relationship. You know, a lot of these people become good friends of yours. What's funny is Evan's in Texas, Yeti's in Texas, in Austin. Evan grew up in Fort Pierce, the town north of me. So we're so much closer. To find that out after the fact is pretty funny. His family lives, you know, 30 minutes from me. So he spent a lot of time in the, obviously fishing in this area. So we have, we have a lot in common. It's, it's, you know, the fishing we can understand, we can relate. We spent time fishing the same, the same waters growing up. You know, he, I didn't know him at that, that point, but we both, you know, we both fished these waters. So it was, it was kind of cool to meet up, to develop that relationship develop the friendship and, under, and realize that, God, you know, this whole time you were right down the street from me. Yeah, they're feeding on the wall here. This could be good. They love pinning these mullet up against walls. There he is. Oh, nice fish. I missed him. There he is again. Got him. That time, a little snook. Hey. What was that, three, three times? Yeah. <laughs> I've been really focused on that wall. Like, they're gonna pin it, like, like this. in this interior wall. If you just keep beating on that, they're gonna pin it up against yeah. that wall. Nice. nice little snook. Go. Guys, imagine I'm here. Uh, uh, these are in there. Just feeding on these mullet. Get fat for the winter. That little pencil just does the trick. There's a lot bigger ones in there than this. Yeah, I no promise doubt. You. Topwater fishing is a dance. It's a, it's a slow rhythmic cadence. It's a rhythm that you have to get into. And I think what mistake a lot of people make is going too fast. And another thing is when you get the bite, don't set the hook. Everybody wants to swing on it. If you just keep that same cadence going, letting that fish come tight to you, you're gonna have a better chance of setting the hook. Oh, nice! Jack or snook? Uh, I don't know yet. I think it's a small snook. I got a jack. Ah. They love to feed on walls. Just love. Nope, jack. You got a jack too? Yeah. Yeah, these guys are just I tell you what, during the mullet run, man, they're day savers. You know, it's funny. There's a lot of people who don't like to catch jacks. Uh, I, I love it. I mean, I'm a huge fan of anything that that eats a lure or live bait or anything and pulls, you know. And and so, you know, when you're fishing for snook and the jacks, you know, there's you have to weed through the jacks, which is, you know, it's it's just part of it. Timing-wise, this trip falls right on the tail end of the mullet run, and it's a great time to fish this Stewart area. It's a unique opportunity to throw top water plugs. If you can get somebody on the boat that knows how to cast, you can really wreck the fish. And what happens is during this time of the year, there's so much bait in the water, there's so much mullet. These fish get lazy though, and what they want to do is they want to seek these uh, opportunities to pin these fish up against seawalls. So during this time of the year is a highly effective way to catch not only snook, but jacks and other bycatch as well. Evan is the fishing marketing manager at Yeti, and what that means is he oversees all the ambassadors on the marine side of things. The job seems like a pretty, pretty cool gig. He gets to hang out with some of the best captains and guides around the country, travels, helps put these events on, um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of opportunities there to, to do some fishing like we're doing now. So definitely, definitely a cool gig. That's a snook. Nice. Yeah, way up in that corner. 
Perfect. Oh. A little further. You got it. These ambush points, man, during the mullet run, you can kind of sit out there in the middle, you know, yeah. and like I say, they go by, but if you could pick these points where they just ambush like this and have to pin them up against the wall. I love fishing sea walls this time of the year. Nice snug. Nice. Nice snug. Yozuri pencil, man. I'm telling you. A little better quality. And there are some jumbos in there. That's the whole thing. You know, you're kind of at a quandary where you have a small enough tackle that you can cast it in there, but that's something that you can stop them. A little more respectable. You come in here, throw something that mimics a mullet. I mean, look at that, that's what he wants. You can have action all day long. The biggest thing is, you know, you need to use tackle that you can effectively cast, you know, a good distance and accurately. So, uh, you know, you, we were using Yozuri, I think it was like 15, 20 pound braid. And um, that's not a lot in this kind of structure. You gotta imagine there's some big snook in this area. So a lot of times you'll get the bite, but a, being able to stop them, to turn their heads, to keep them from running into those docks and breaking you off on the pilings, that's a different story. Oh! oh, this is gonna be fun. No, 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 no. Come on out. Come on out. Dude, you don't wanna go that way. You don't wanna go that way. You don't, yes, you wanna go that way. You wanna yeah. go that way. Get him. Dude. You wanna go. Tie on whatever you got on. <sighs> nice job. Look at this going off out here. Another jack. You gotta weed through these jacks, man. You wanna come out here and catch some snook. You definitely gotta go through some jacks. bait that fell out of his mouth, another one just came up and ate. Another jack? Yeah, another jack came up and uh, spit out uh, a mullet and uh, one came up and ate it. Uh, these, these, these guys are so aggressive. I mean, you just see that one came up and ate the bait that fell out of his, ate the bait that fell out of his mouth, but super aggressive feeders, you know? Whenever you see them blowing up on the wall, like continually blowing up, blowing up, blowing up, blowing up, like out here getting chased right now, this is, this is all jacks there. You hear those thumps, a single thump? A snook's not gonna continue to chase it. He's gonna hit it once, maybe twice on a wall, and he's gonna leave it alone. They're super lazy. Well, I mean, he works for probably one of the coolest companies out there. I mean, I, there's no, no other really way to put it. It's, uh, it's one of those brands that everybody wants to be associated with, and I'm proud to be a part of it, but, it goes deeper than that. You know, they treat you like family and you become one of the, one of the family members. And that's, that's what I like the best. You know, it's, it's more than just a business relationship. It's, uh, you're brought in, you're, you're, you're part of a culture and you become friends with all the other ambassadors and it, it just opens up so many doors and you develop so many new relationships through, you know, sponsorships like this. Slowly pull him back, there you go. Towards you guys. Going under. Jack. Big old Jackie Jack. Sometimes it's frustrating when you're trying to catch big snook and you can't get it past the jacks to get the snook, but um, it it's still a blast. And we caught a handful of, you know, a handful and uh, it was, it's always, it's always awesome fun on light tackle and even just see anything on top water is fun, you know, um, just watching the eats and, and the cool thing is, I mean, you can tell how they fight, um, what, what it is, but you truly never know until you actually get color and you get to see them. So it's always kind of a surprise and, you know, obviously in the river, it's a little shallower, so you get them, get them in quicker. Anything out there is fun. Ah.
It's nice to be home and kind of get off the highway of life per se, not just the highway in here, you know, and, and just kind of relax. I get to see my parents have a home cooked meal. I think that's what, it just brings me back. Like those are some of the uh, most cherished memories I have is with my dad, like fishing Fort Pierce and like whether it be inshore, offshore, or whatever, just spending time together. Sometimes we don't catch anything and drink beer, you know, it's like, it's just good times. So. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Kaboom! Jack tuna, canal tunas. <laughs> That's what we call them. They're beasts. Um, Jack Creval, I always said they never get the credit that they deserve. If they ate well, if they jumped, they're, they'd, everybody in the world would target them. They're such hard fighting fish. The explosions are so aggressive. And that's the great thing about them. It's a great fish to target, especially for somebody new into fishing because it's so visual. And it gives you the opportunity to maybe miss it the first time, but unlike a snook, a jack is gonna continue after that plug. If he misses it the first time, he's just relentless and just offers you multiple opportunities to get the hook set. Right down that wall, bud. We always knew the local spots down here. Um, not, not necessarily like, like the local, local spots, the guide spots or anything like that, but we knew, you know, where people would fish and where to find fish and dock lights and stuff. We spent a lot of time down here fishing at night too, so. You could fish just about every dock, every space, every spot in Stewart is, you know, is gonna, you're gonna catch some fish. But I tend to hit the high percentage areas. And talking about these seawalls, these are high percentage areas. They're ambush points that cut off 180 degrees where a bait cannot get away. These snook jacks, they'll pin a bait up against a wall. And if you throw your plug right down the wall, it simulates a mullet swimming down the wall. Oh my God. Oh, I think it's a snook. Dude, this Ooh, drag is locked too. That thing's working you. It is. Like a part-time job. <laughs> oh, well, he's pretty decent. I <laughs> tell you what, Put man. Put up a heck of a fight. Pound for it's pound. always so fun, yeah. And it's just these guys and the snook pinning these mullet up against the wall. Holy shit, Batman. God, you can just hear it down there. There wasn't, we didn't see really anything else mixed in there other than Jackson snook. Um, you know, I feel like uh, during the tarpon run, I mean, like if, more so if you're on the outside, like along the beach, you'll see a bunch of tarpon and sharks and redfish and stuff in there too. Um, but it, this time, you know, just Jackson snook. Oh my god. That's gosh. a snook. He just sat there waiting for it. <laughs> it fell off the wall and he this ate it. This is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, they're ambush feeders from below. They're gonna rise up and hit that plug and they're immediately gonna turn their heads back down and head towards that structure. So. You know, there's not a lot of opportunity to turn them, especially using lighter tackle, but you just, in that very beginning, is the, the most important point where you can just turn their heads and get them coming in your direction. <laughs> Big old bruiser jack. <sighs> ah. Dude, that was kind of weird. It fell right off the wall and he ate it. I put this trip around the slack tide event and what that is it's a, a gathering of guides yeti puts it on uh, once a year and it happens to be right down the street from my house evan was flying in for this event and i thought what a great opportunity to have him here to be able to jump on the boat spend some time on the water with him and hopefully catch some fish so we put on this guide event with a bunch of other big uh, a handful of other big brands that we've been doing for quite a few years and uh, it's just kind of a guide appreciation event we we come down and we cook for the guys. We have uh, we have a lot of uh, products that are on special deals. Um, we do seminars, whether it be Oliver White talking about um, talking about hosted trips and, and taking 
you know, ex expanding your guide business and when you're in the off season, be able to go to different lodges that, that aren't in the off season and, and bring your clientele into that. We had, you know, captains for clean water, Daniel, um, Daniel Andrews and Chris Whitman kind of talked about some Florida water quality issues. Um, we talked about um, kick plastic, our kick plastic campaign, um, you know, trying to eliminate single use plastic bottles and also just show these guys, you know, just show them a good time and, and thank them for, you know, being being ambassadors for, for the, our brands and the sport of fishing. Did you see that? Wow. Just keep them out here in the open. Oh my God. That's the one we're looking for. Oh my God. Oh, don't go towards the piling. Don't go towards the piling. Don't go towards the piling. Follow him around here. Follow him around, Evan. Follow him around, Evan. Come all the way around, bud. Easy, easy, easy. Don't, 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 don't. Yeah, don't horse him. You got him. He's out, he's out in the middle of nowhere, so don't worry about horsing him. Oh. Gee, that's the one we wanted right there. Yes. Look at the head on that wow. thing. Wow. He just blew fish. up on my plug, wow. missed it. You threw right back in there, and God, that was... look at this. What a beautiful God. fish. When you when you finally get the one that you were looking for, it's a weight off your chest. And I guide full time, so I feel this pressure continuously. So often you know that one fish is there, you'll get an explosion and you'll miss it. And you just, sometimes not everything goes your way, but when you do land that one quality fish, that's it, the pressure's off. The rest is gravy. You know, you've, 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 you've accomplished what you've come for and it's such a good feeling, just that weight lifted off my chest. Oh God, my, hard my lungs hurt. <laughs> Bent over the whole time. Yeah. God, man. Woo! Dude. Yeah, buddy. Thank you so much. Nice. That was awesome. I'm so glad you got you that. Teased, you teased her up. <laughs> so glad you got that, dude. That was awesome. I tell his clients all the time, you cannot sit there, or when you're live baiting on heavy structure, you can't sit there with just you know, daydreaming. You have to be ready at all times. Same thing when you're throwing a plug in there. You have to be ready for that explosion at all times because when it comes, it comes fast. And if you let them turn their heads and head back into that structure, you're gonna lose every fish. So it's a little stressful. It's, a, you know, your, your awareness is heightened. You're always ready for that next bite. And, but that's what keeps you so engaged. Oh my goodness, look how fat that thing is. So fat. I'm just walking it right along this dock right here and it blew up right here next to the boat. Right next to the boat. Wow. Every cast is almost like a little casting contest, you know. Evan's firing in there and he gets close to the wall then I fire in trying to, so it's kind of a, a back and forth. It's a lot of fun, you know. Not only, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to obviously, you know, you want to outdo the guy next to you, but it's, it's it's somewhat of a challenge to get that cast in the right spot every time. You know, I have rare opportunities to come down here and, and to get a big fish was awesome. Like that's that may be my biggest snook today. I it's pretty cool to, to have that one day that I came here, got the fish, which is awesome. So it was, it was a really cool experience to be able to do that and you know in a short a short time window, you know, and, and get to pull that off. I just I'm such a fan of of being on a boat that's catching fish i don't care if it's me or somebody else so like seeing him hammer them all i was you know I, you know retying and, and going through the lure box and all that like it's i was like i had a blast like it's so cool but luckily he didn't catch any big snook you know while i was doing that he was just caught a couple of jacks <laughs>